<laughs> Sounds to me like there's a loose wire there. Yeah, I think so. Works when it wants to. I've got a video of that one. <laughs> this one? Yeah. This fan? <clears throat> oh, the speaker. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talking about the fan. That's why I was going over there and I'm like, maybe she just doesn't have a vision. Anyways. Alright. So we just read Revelation 13 8. Correct? No, no, no. 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 1311. Okay. And there we go. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. I uh, I entitled this. on the milk program. <coughs> you know, um, hopefully, you're not still on the milk program. Because uh, Paul calls us to, to dig into the deeper things and to chew real food, right? Um, you know, there's, there's something that God put in milk. It's... Um, Oh, I can't think of the name of it now. Jason? No. Cassie? Wayne? No. no. But that's all the bad stuff. Now, this is good stuff. Yep. Stuff that makes you want the milk. Oh. Case of morphine. Case of morphine. Morphine. I've heard that word before, huh? Uh -huh. That makes you desire the milk. Naturally occurs in the cow's milk and in the mother's milk. Hence, you have to wean the child away. You have to wean the cow away. Of course, I don't think they even raise cows together anymore with their calves because Cornell says it's better to move them off. Raise them off there by themselves in a little dog house or a calf house. It's all about money today. It's all about money. The point is that it takes, it takes something to get away from the milk and desire chewing of real food. And uh, if you expect the pastor to, to masticate everything for you, um, that's a fancy word for chew, um, then you're probably not spending time in your Bible. You're probably not spending time praying. And you're pretty much just wasting your time being a chew, you know, a chew, a pew, a sitter. Hmm. That may have a double meaning there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I want to speak about this two-horned beast. What is this two-horned beast? <laughs> Pardon me? It is the United States. When I found this out, I, I wasn't real happy about this. But, you know, this doesn't even make sense. This two-horned lamb beast that speaks like a dragon. How is that even possible? How is that even possible? Here in the <coughs> home of the brave, land of the free, Oh, it'll never happen here. This won't happen, that won't happen. Look around you, brothers and sisters. You know? I don't care if it's Republican, Democrat, Socialist, whatever. Seems to me they're all on the same page. They really are. They're just moving the ball down the court. And everybody is just so dumbed down today that they don't even remember. What happened so long ago? You know? It, it was Ronald Reagan that, that brought us representatives to the Vatican. Okay? And they had a big ordeal about that because they weren't sure that they should be doing this because, you know, the number one says that we should have separation of, you know, 
church and state. We shouldn't be in bed with, with religion, right? But the Pope convinced them that that's not the church side. That's the government side. Well, is there a difference in the Vatican? No, brothers and sisters, there is no difference. But people have been dumbed down to the point that they don't remember anything of history. We should learn from our mistakes, but we don't. So we go on and we have these stupid little petty any things that go on in the country that are happening before our eyes today in the name of religious freedom. And it's a joke. People, what's happening is not the truth. The truth is Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you stay focused upon Him, you will learn truth, and truth will set you free. Amen. But this garbage that they're spewing out is just going to fill your mind with garbage. Does anybody even do math problems anymore? Is everything done on a computer? Yeah. Everything's computer. We don't even think anymore today. I, I hate not being here. I hate missing my home church. I was off visiting my family outside of Dallas, and uh, it was a nice visit. Of course, you know, Texas is not Florida. Hot, burnt, just like California. Just everything. <laughs> you know. It is. But uh, anyways, I had a nice visit and uh, went to a real nice church out there. They, they rent um, uh, Saturday day at a Methodist church. And it's a beautiful church. And they have at least half as many more people as we do. Okay? And they're in somebody else's church. So I said to them, what's the problem? You guys can handle this. You know? Oh, we're looking. We're looking. But it was a really nice church. And I, I really enjoyed it. And they gave me a book and they gave me a bag. And it, it just made me feel really good, you know. And uh, this very beautiful black woman with a yellow dress and very colorful, just beautiful hair. She comes up to me and she says, you look just like Doug Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> and I says, you know, I've heard that before. <laughs> And then she says, and we love Doug Bachelor. And I, what do you say to that? <laughs> I don't know if it was possible for me to blush, I probably would have. <laughs> Anyways, I said, thank you, I love you too. Um, but it was a wonderful church, it made me feel really good. Um, and I love the fact that in Sabbath school, we were talking and I had a really good class that was, was all going. It was a woman from Jamaica, her name was... Um, Screwing us up, Pam or Pat? I think it was Pam. I'm pretty sure it was Pam. And she was running the class, and uh, I started talking about the sanctuary. And boy, I'll tell you what: the more I talked about the sanctuary, the more excited this lady got. And uh, it was wonderful. I mean, when people are getting excited about what you're talking about, it makes you excited. And more things just started started pouring out. It was just so beautiful. I had a wonderful time. There. I didn't ask my son to go with me this time. I always do. My one son. And I'm not going to name because who knows what happened to this thing. But um, he, uh, he didn't come with me. But he asked me to go to his church. Uh, he's come with me several times. So I went with him. And we went into one of these non-denominational churches. Okay. And as we're walking in there, you can hear boom, boom, boom. You know, this is this is it, right? And and I'm walking in there and I'm trying to be cool, you know? I'm trying to be cool. And I said, what is that? It's coming from the sanctuary. Worship and praise music. So we drop off the grandbabies into that same kind of music. <clears throat> Boom. I 
and save me. Went into the sanctuary and they're doing their thing. You know. And I'm trying to stand there and put on a game face. You know. And, and, and nobody uses Bibles anymore. Nobody, nobody uses handles anymore. Everything's up on a screen. And it's just the same thing repeated over and over and over. It whips you into an emotional frenzy. And I like music. I really like music. So, you know, Alice Presley once said, something has to move. My, my pinky toe started moving. I said, stop that. <laughs> you know, and I'm standing there, and I did. You know, the music didn't go on forever. Thank God. And then the sermon. <coughs> there wasn't anything there. I, I don't even know if I call it milk. Maybe some milk. Some things were said up there that. I wouldn't even talk about in church. Okay? My son says to me afterwards, he says, tell me what you think. I said, uh, you sure you want to hear this? And he said, yeah, yeah. And I told him. And he said, I could tell him. Well, how could he tell? How could he tell? Because I was trying everything I could do to not stick out like a sore thumb and not act like I didn't belong. You know what I'm saying? I tried to be cool, but he could tell. Why could he tell? Maybe, yeah, he knows me, but maybe more so, too, that he knows what's going on there and ain't what's right. You know, brothers and sisters, we cannot... We cannot change. We cannot unsee something we've seen. We cannot unhear something we've heard. You can't undo something you've done. You follow me? Listen, the problem I see a lot with Adventism in general, and not, I'm speaking about our church, but in general, is the fact that People think that we need to leave the most holy place, okay, and go out and, and, and church the unchurched, right? That's the whole idea. But what happens when that happens? These people that leave the most holy place lose their way. You're not going to convert the world when you're out in it. The world is only going to be converted to the most holy place. We call them in. Come out of Babylon is the message. You hear me? This is what we should be talking about. This is what we should be preaching and teaching. These two horns, Republicanism and Protestantism, is what brought us the freedom that we have here today. And I'm not talking Republican as in the Republicans that we have today. I mean, this is the Republic of the United States. It's supposed to be a Republic. It was a Republic at the start. Now it's a democracy, they say. How long do democracies last? They don't last. The rule of the people? The majority? When is the majority ever right? When has God's people ever been a majority? You ever seen that? Listen, the world, brothers and sisters, is in captivity, but it has grown fond of its captivity. It's a terrible shame that we're done down so badly. I uh, want to read you something. I know some people don't like reading, but this is so good. This is from The Shaken, early writings, okay? Page 269 for all you A students that want to check out that. I saw some with strong faith 
and agonizing cries, pleading with God. Their countenances were pale and marked with deep anxiety, expressive of their internal struggles. Firmness and great earnestness was expressed in their countenances. Large drops of preparation, perspiration fell from their foreheads. Does that sound like anything to you? Does that bring a picture to mind? Following Jesus Christ. Now and then, their faces would light up with marks of God's aggravation. And again, the same solemn, earnest, anxious look would settle upon them. Evil angels crowded around, pressing darkness upon them to shut out Jesus from their view. That their eyes might be drawn to the darkness that surrounded them. And thus they be led to distrust God and murmur against Him. Their only safety was in keeping their eyes directed upward. Angels of God had charge over his people, and as the poisonous atmosphere of each evil angels was pressed around these anxious ones, the heavenly angels were continually wafting, wafting, is that what you say? Wafting. Waf wafting? Yeah. wafting their wings over them to scatter the thick darkness. Yeah, the, 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 the gal that wrote this had a two and a half year education. As the praying ones continued their earnest cries, at a time a ray of light from Jesus came to them to encourage their hearts and light up their countenances. Some I saw did not participate in this work of agonizing and pleading. They seemed indifferent and careless. They were not resisting the darkness around them. Are you resisting the darkness around you? And it shut them in like a thick cloud. The angels of God left these and went to the aid of the earnest praying ones. I saw angels of God hasten to the assistance of all who were struggling with all their power to resist the evil angels and trying to help themselves by calling upon God with perseverance. But his angels left those who made no effort to help themselves, and I lost sight of them. I asked the meaning of the shaking. Shaken. I had seen and was shown that it would be caused by the straight testimony called forth by the counsel of the true witness to the Laodiceans. Is the sanctuary message, brothers and sisters, the true message to the Laodiceans? This will have its effect upon the heart of the receiver and will lead him to exalt the standard and pour forth the straight truth. Some will not bear the straight testimony. They will rise up against it. And this is what will cause a shaking among God's people. I saw that the testimony of the true witness was not half healed, had not been half healed. The solemn testimony upon which the destiny of the church hangs has been lightly esteemed, if not entirely disregarded. This testimony must work deep repentance. All who truly receive it will obey it and be purified. Said the angel, list ye, soon I heard a voice like many musical instruments, all sounding in perfect strains, sweet and harmonious. It surpassed any music I had ever heard, seeming to be full of mercy, compassion, and elevating holy joy. It thrilled through the stuck paper. It thrilled through my whole being, said the angel. Look ye, my attention was turned to the company I had seen. We were we were mightily shaken. I was shown those whom I had before seen weeping and praying in agony of spirit. The company of guardian angels around them had been doubled. And they were clothed with an armor from their head to their feet. They moved in exact order, like a company of soldiers. Their countenances expressed the severe conflict which they had endured, the agonizing struggle they had passed through. Yet their features, marked with severe internal anguish, now shone with the light and glory of heaven. They had obtained the victory, 
and it called forth from the deepest gratitude and holy, sacred joy. Does this sound like an easy thing to go through? It sounds like a struggle, doesn't it? You know, most of the world teaches that it's all going to be easy. You just be whisked away, man. You don't even have to worry. Yeah, there's still time. There's still time. There's always time. The number of this company was lessened. Some had been shaken out and left by the way. The careless and indifferent. Why? Who? Wait. The careless and indifferent who did not join with those who prized victory and salvation through salvation enough to perseveringly plead and agonize for it did not obtain it. And they were left behind in darkness. And their places were immediately filled by others taking hold of the truth and coming into the ranks. Evil angels still pressing around them but could have no power over them. I heard those clothed with the armor speak forth the truth with great power. It had effect. Many had been bound, some wives by their husbands and some children by their parents. The honest who had been prevented from hearing the truth now eagerly laid a hold upon it. All fear of their relatives was gone, and the truth alone was exalted to them. They had been hungering and thirsting for truth. It was dearer and more precious than life. I asked, what had made this great change? An angel answered, it is the latter rain, the refreshing presence from the Lord, the loud cry of the third angel. Great power was with these chosen ones, said the angel. Look ye, my attention was turned to the wicked or unbelievers. They were all astir. The zeal and power with the people of God had aroused and enraged them. Confusion, confusion was on every side. I saw measures taken against the company who had the light and power of God. Darkness thickened around them, yet they stood firm, approved of God, and trusting in Him. I saw them perplexed. Next I heard them cry unto God earnestly. Day and night their cries cease not. Thy will, O God, be done. If it can glorify thy name, make a way of escape for thy people. Deliver us from the heathen round about us. They have appointed us unto death, but thine arm can bring salvation. These are all the words which I can bring to mind. All seem to have a deep sense of their unworthiness and manifest entire submission to the will of God. Yet like Jacob, everyone without exception was earnestly pleading and wrestling for deliverance. Soon after they had commenced their earnest cry, the angels in sympathy desired to go to their deliverance, but a, tall, but a tall, commanding angel suffered them not. He said, the will of God is not yet fulfilled. They must drink of the cup. They must be baptized with the baptism. Remember the disciples when they said to Jesus, oh, we can drink the cup. Listen, brothers and sisters, nobody ever drank the cup. Even these people here that are going through this this end time, they aren't even going to drink the cup. They're drinking of the cup, but they're not drinking the cup and all its drinks as Jesus did. Only Jesus, only he went through it all. But he's having a people here that are unshakable. Unshakable. But they didn't get there by drinking milk. Okay? These people aren't on the milk program. These people seek the deep things of God. They spend time in their Bible. They spend time in prayer. They spend time making sure that all their sins are confessed and everything is in the sanctuary. Because if it isn't in the sanctuary, it can't be dealt with. Mm -hmm. Soon I heard the voice of God which shook the heavens and the earth. There was a mighty earthquake. Buildings were shaken down on every side. I then heard a triumph, triumphant sound of victory, loud, musical, and clear. I looked upon the company who a short time before were in such distress and bondage. Their captivity was turned. A glorious light shone upon them. How beautiful they then looked. All marks of care and weariness were gone, and health and beauty were seen in every countenance. Their enemies, the heathen around them, fell like dead men. 
They could not endure the light that shone upon the delivered holy ones. The light and glory remained upon them until Jesus was seen in the clouds of heaven. And the faithful tried company were changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, from glory to glory, and the graves were opened, and the saints came forth, clothed with immortality, crying victory over death in the grave. And together with the living saints, they were caught up to meet their Lord in the air, while rich, musical shouts of glory and victory were upon every immortal tongue. Every immortal tongue. Isn't that wonderful? You know, Jesus is not trying to, to keep anybody out of heaven, okay? Mm -hmm. The books that are being written are written for your benefit, not against you. The accuser is the devil. He's the one that comes and says, look, Diana did this, and she did that, and the other thing. And what do the books say? God says, oh, no. Look at the books. Diana, forgive him. Forgive him. Forgive him. You see, people got God as this, 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 this bad guy. And this garbage is going on overseas with these poor people having their children's heads lopped off in the name of some kind of God. What kind of God is that? Stop and think about that for a minute. What kind of God is that? What kind of God would force you to love him. Is that crazy? I, I just don't know. It's got to take a lot of faith to, to stand there and, and, and have your children, your grandchildren martyred in front of you. How, how do you do that? How is that possible? I, I, there's no way I can do it. In and of my own strength, there is absolutely no way. No way. Prayer, brothers and sisters, is us speaking and God listening. Are we spending time in prayer? Because you know those people over there, they are definitely spending time in prayer. They're probably praying in ways, pardon me, and they're probably praying in a way you've never prayed before. In a more serious manner than you ever imagined. The Word of God is, is Him speaking and us listening. That's what our Bible does for us, brothers and sisters. It's God speaking and us listening. Prayer is us speaking and God listening. Are we really doing that? Are we spending that kind of time with our Savior? Or do we just want milk? Just give us the milk. We'll go to sit. Take a little bit. Take a little bit. Are you listening to God and is He listening to you? Brothers and sisters, I want you to realize it's 1798. 1798 was the end or was the beginning of the end. Amen. You follow me? Listen, when it said, let's read down here a little bit further. Um, 1311 speaks as a dragon, and then I start out in 12. And, ec and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them that which dwell there to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doth make, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven and the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by this.